kitchen can be a crazy, hectic place. Between dish soap, fire, and wine glasses, we're going to test the limits of some common kitchen items and this wait staff. Hello, ladies. Thanks for helping me out. Uh, so have you ever held fire in your hand before? No. no. It sounds like an incredible power, doesn't it, to be able to hold like a ball of fire in your hand and not hurt yourself? Watch carefully. You might see something surprising. Oh, my oh. goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you are crazy. How did you do that? Now, high up in the air. All right, ready? Oh, oh, oh my God. So why don't their hands burn? The secret is in the soap bubbles that lie beneath the butane bubbles. They create an insulating layer between the fire and the skin. As the butane burns upward, the resulting vapor layer continues to create insulation from the fire. Nick has a much more dangerous experiment in mind that you should also never, ever try. Nick, let your hand on fire and slap him in the face. That was a good slap. So how can Darren survive this? The butane burns off so quickly that the flames don't deliver enough heat to catch his beard on fire. And there's another reason. Just as Nick wet his hand for protection, he prepped Darren by wetting his face and beard, insulating him from the heat. I really enjoyed that. I guess we should let Darren cool off. Are you guys ready to set yourselves on fire? Yeah. Can the butane flame be transferred down a line of six people without burning out or burning anyone first? Everybody ready? Three, two, one. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so How do you feel? It was like mind blowing. It's crazy. <laughs> Can I tell you how we did it and why that works? Yeah. Okay. Because you dunked your hand in soapy water. That's it. When all that gas lit on fire, the water absorbed the heat and evaporated, leaving a little pocket of gas between your skin and the fire. You're fine. <laughs> How often do y'all think about science when you're playing? Never. Never? Yet. Acoustics, vibrations, yeah. so it sneaks up on you, but it's there. Every object has a natural resonant frequency, the speed at which it will vibrate if bumped or otherwise disturbed by some stimulus, such as a sound wave. Glass wine goblets are especially resonant because of their hollow tubular shape. So this is a rock and roll venue. Y'all rock real hard. Can you rock so hard you break that glass? Sound level meter indicates we got 126 decibels, more than enough volume to break the glass. So why didn't it break? The thing is that every object has a specific resonant tone, and that's what we need to do is find that tone and isolate it and focus it directly at the glass, and we should be able to get it to break. Think cool. you can do it? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. All right, let's go find the tone. All right. We need to sustain that tone for as long as we can because we really need to kind of build it up. I want to break it so bad. I believe you can do it. Yeah. Put in your earplugs, everybody. Betty's got some amazing pipes. She can generate the resonant frequency, but maybe not enough volume to shatter the glass. Jim plays a C note on his trumpet and matches the resonant frequency of this glass, 523 hertz.
think it's kind of interesting that the side that failed was the side where the trumpet bell was. Oh. So since the tone wasn't coming out of the speaker, it didn't resonate through the entire glass as much, and it really focused on that one area. It proved exactly what we were talking about. All right. Nicely done. Science. Yeah. Fires are out thanks to dish soap, and only one glass is broken. I'd say that it's time to get out of this restaurant before we do any more damage. Hello, students. So we're going to be experimenting with a few household items. We've got a glow stick, and we've got some drain cleaner. We're supersizing this reaction by using the chemicals of a glow stick in bulk and combining them on this canvas. Let's go. Our canvas is plastic lined, and I add the drain cleaner first. Alkaline drain cleaners contain sodium hydroxide, also known as lye. This will make the reaction even brighter and faster. But sodium hydroxide can be extremely caustic. That's why we're all wearing masks and protective gear. So the next step is pouring out all of these dyes on the, on the table. This is the same dye and phenyl oxalate ester solution found inside of a glow stick's inner glass capsule. And now we add the final glow stick ingredient, hydrogen peroxide. Are we ready? Yeah. All right. Three, two, one. Pour nice and slow. So why does this reaction look so bright? Glow sticks make light through a process called chemiluminescence. Basically, you kick off a chemical reaction when you bend the glow stick. Darren grabs some slow motion shots of the glow stick breaking. The footage reveals something kind of fascinating. You can actually see that there is a glass vial inside of the glow stick. When this bends and finally breaks, that's when the chemical reaction starts. We had the same reaction here, but with the sodium hydroxide, we kind of speeded that up. It acted as a catalyst to kind of make that reaction really, really visible and really, really bright. And when your uh, hydrogen peroxide is empty, you can grab a brush and start swirling it around and mixing those colors together. It's like lava. Lava. Oh, I love that. Lava. This is so amazing. The drain cleaner speeds up the reaction and makes it glow brighter. The illumination doesn't last very long, but it's very, very pretty. And just like every kitchen should have a fire extinguisher, we always have them on hand for our experiments. These CO2 fire extinguishers are pretty powerful, though, so we want to see if we can use them to power a go-kart. Engineer Nick Householder and builder Chris Jufre are crafting the perfect vehicle to test them out. And now, Nick is ready to get behind the wheel. The hoses will release CO2 from the tanks, but will they provide enough thrust to move a 230-pound go-kart and a 205-pound driver? So, uh, Kevin, what are we going to learn from uh, doing this experiment? How loud you can scream. <laughs> <laughs> if it catches on fire, and we have plenty of fire extinguishers. Wonderful. Opening up the valve of a fire extinguisher and allowing the pressurized contents to escape is similar to the way a rocket engine works. When the liquid CO2 inside the fire extinguisher expands into a gas, the carbon dioxide pushes out. That action creates thrust. We use the lightest materials we can to create less drag on the car. Plus, we used thin bicycle wheels for tires so that less surface area is in contact with the road. Getting prepped. Less contact means less friction and more speed. Are you ready? Yep. All right. Here we go. I hope he breaks. With just two extinguishers, Nick hits speeds of 15 miles per hour over a distance of about 300 feet. Darren's slow-mo reveals the liquid carbon dioxide expanding into a gas. It expands with such force that it propels the go-kart forward. 
our fire extinguisher go-kart has got some thrust, propelling Nick 300 feet to the end of the parking lot before running out of room. But how much farther can it go? To find out, we're heading to a nearby drag strip. To harness the cart's maximum potential, we're doubling the number of extinguishers. Do you think we're going to even be able to get to the finish line with this thing? Uh, maybe by sundown. 660 feet a week? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. sounds about yeah. right. Sounds yeah. about right. <laughs> All right, well, there's only one way to find out. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go! These canisters of CO2 can go the distance. They propel Nick 650 feet down the track at almost 30 miles per hour and more than double our earlier try. It's not going to get us to space, but it's a good start. Exactly. You hit 29 miles an hour in 22 seconds. That's not half bad. I'm a rocket scientist in a rocket car. It's hard not to have a good time. Exactly. Discovery.